lesson, I'm going to show you some problems involving parallel and perpendicular lines. So before we take a look at these problems, I just want to draw your attention to these rules over here. So the first one is with parallel lines, okay? So when lines are parallel, like in this diagram at the top, the gradients are always equal to each other, okay? The gradients are the same. And if lines are perpendicular to each other, like in this diagram, if you were to take the two different gradients of these lines, when you multiply the gradients together, you should always find it equals negative one, okay, when they're perpendicular. Remember, perpendicular means they cross at an angle of 90 degrees, okay, that's the angle they make with each other. So in the first question, it says that the coordinates of three points are A, which is at minus 6, 4, B, which is at 4, 6, and C at 10, 7. Show whether or not A, B, and C are collinear. Now, collinear just means the points lie on the same straight line, okay? So we have to show whether or not A, B, and C lie on the same straight line or not, okay? So if I just draw a diagram assuming they are on the same straight line, so A, B, and C, it would look something like this. Now, you should be able to see that the gradient of the line AB is the same as the gradient of the line BC if they lie on the same straight line, okay? So it's a good idea to work out the gradient of these two separate lines and then we can compare them. So if it's the same gradient, we know they're collinear and they lie on the same straight line. And if they're two different gradients, well, it shows that they're not collinear, okay? So I'm going to start by working out the gradient of the line AB. So I'm going to work out M of AB. And to work out the gradient, I'm going to use a method called rise over run, okay? It just means I'm going to find the difference between the Y coordinates and divide by the difference of the x coordinates, okay? That's how we calculate the gradient. So the points A and B are here. So the rise is a difference in the y coordinates, so four take away six. And remember, it doesn't matter which way round, you subtract the coordinates, okay? It will give you the same gradient, okay? And then we have to divide by the run, which is the difference in the x coordinates. So negative six take away four. And then if we calculate that, 4 take away 6 is negative 2, negative 6 take away 4 is negative 10, and if I simplify that fraction, I get 1 fifth. So that is the gradient of the line AB, okay, 1 fifth. So now we need to work out the gradient of this line, BC. So M of BC, and again, using that method, rise over run, I'm going to start by subtracting the Y values of B and C, so 6 take away 7, then I need to divide by the run, which is the difference in the x values, so 4 take away 10, and if I calculate that, 6 take away 7 is negative 1, 4 take away 10 is negative 6, and that simplifies to 1 6, okay? So the gradients are different. Okay, so that diagram that I drew, that sketch, that's not true, okay? These gradients are not equal to each other, therefore the points don't lie on the same line, the points are not collinear. So your show part is your working out, and, and at the end you can just summarise by either saying the gradient of AB is a fifth and the gradient of BC is a sixth. The gradients are not the same, so the points are not collinear. It's always good just to summarise at the end just to really drive home the point that they're not collinear, okay? So in question two, it says the coordinates of three points are A, K minus five minus 15, B, 10 K, and C, six minus K. Find the two possible values of K if A, B, and C are collinear. Okay, so A, B, and C lie on the same straight line. So I've just done a little sketch here just so we can see what that would look like, okay? And remember, if they're collinear like this, the gradient of A to B should be the same as the gradient of B to C, okay? So we're going to try and work out the gradient of A, B, and B, C. It doesn't matter that there are values of K here. We're just going to work out expressions for the gradients. Then we're going to put them equal to each other, and hopefully then there'll be an equation that we can solve to find the values of k that they need. So let's start by working out the gradient of AB. OK, 
okay, so M of AB. And remember that method rise over run to calculate the gradient is to subtract the Y values. So negative 15, take away K. Then we're going to divide by the difference in the X values. So K minus five, take away 10. Okay, and if I simplify that, I can just simplify the denominator. Negative 5 take away 10 is negative 15, so it becomes k take away 15. Okay, so that's an expression for the gradient of the line AB. Okay, now we're going to find the gradient of the line BC. Okay, so M of BC. And again, I'm going to start by subtracting the y values. So k take away negative k, watch out for the double negative, divided by 10 take away 6. And if I simplify that, k take away negative k is k plus k, which is 2k. And 10 take away 6 is 4. I can also simplify the numerator and the denominator by 2, so that I get k over 2. So that is an expression for the gradient of the line BC. Now remember, those gradients have to equal each other because the points are collinear. So now I'm going to put this expression equal to k over 2. Okay, so then we've got an equation to solve to find the values of k. Okay, so I'm just putting the gradients equal to each other over here. Okay, so to solve this equation, I'm going to cross multiply. So I'm going to multiply by this denominator here too, and I'm also at the same time going to multiply by this denominator here, k minus 15. Okay, so if I multiply all of this numerator by 2, I get negative 30, and if I times negative k by 2, I get negative 2k. Then if I multiply k by this denominator, I have k multiplied by k, which is k squared, and k multiplied by negative 15 is negative 15k. So I'm just cross multiplying here to solve this equation. Okay, so now I've got rid of those fractions, okay, I'm going to move everything over to the right hand side of the equation, because I'm solving a quadratic, and I want it to equal zero, okay, so I have just one k squared term, then if I move this negative 2k over to the right, it's going to change to a positive 2k, so if I have negative 15k and I add 2k, I then have negative 13k. So my pen's only out. Then if I move negative 30 over to the right hand side, it changes to a positive 30. Okay, so this is the quadratic equation we're trying to solve. So you could either use the quadratic formula, or I think this one we can actually factorize. Okay, so I'm going to pop it into brackets like this. Okay, so I'm going to fill in the k terms first. And then these two numbers here have to multiply to give 30, but they have to add to give negative 13. Okay, so it should be negative 3 and negative 10. Okay, they times to give 30 and they add to give negative 13. Okay, so now that I've factorized it, I can see my two values of k. k is either positive 3 or positive 10. And that's the answer. In the next question, it says the midpoint of the line segment during P minus 4, 5 and Q, 6, 1 is N. The point R has coordinates minus 3, minus 7, and we have to show that RN is perpendicular to PQ. So I've just done a little rough sketch over here to help us answer this question, okay? So PQ is here, and we know that M is the midpoint, so halfway along that line. And then there's a point R over here, okay, and RN is perpendicular to PQ, okay, so they make an angle of 90 degrees with each other, okay. Now remember, when two lines are perpendicular with each other, like in this diagram at the beginning, if you work out the two different gradients and multiply them together, you should find that it equals negative 1. So we're going to try and work out the gradient of this line the gradient of this line, and then hopefully when we multiply them together, we should get negative one, which will show that Rn is perpendicular to PQ. Okay, so I'm going to start by working out the gradient of PQ. So M of PQ. And using rise over run, that means I'm going to subtract the Y values. So five take away one. 
and then divide by the difference in the x values. So negative 4, take away 6. And if I work that out, I get 4 over negative 10, which simplifies to negative 2 fifths. Okay, so there's the gradient of PQ. Now, when I try and work out the gradient of RM, there's a problem because we only have one of the points. Remember, to work out the gradient, you have to have at least two points along that line. And we only have point R, this one here, we don't know the coordinates of point M. Okay, but we do know that M is the midpoint of the line PQ, and so we can work out the coordinates of M using P and Q first, okay, and then afterwards we'll work out the gradient. So remember, to work out the midpoint of a line, you take the x coordinates of these two points, add them together, divide by 2, and then you take the y coordinates of those two points, add them together, divide by 2, and then you have the coordinates of the midpoint, okay? So let's find M. Okay, so I'm going to take the x coordinates of P and Q, so negative 4 and 6. I'm going to add them together and divide by 2. Okay, so when you calculate that, it will give you the x coordinate of the midpoint n. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing with the y coordinate, so 5 plus 1, and again divide by 2. Okay, so if we work this out, 6 take away 4 is 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1. 5 plus 1 is 6, divided by 2 is 3. So that is point M, okay, at 1, 3. Okay, so now we have the coordinates of two points on that line. We can calculate the gradient of that line. Okay, so I'm going to work out the gradient M of the line RM. Okay, so I'm going to subtract the y coordinates of r and m, remember it's rise over run. So r coordinate is here, okay, so negative 7, take away the r and r coordinate, the y coordinate of the midpoint, so 3, divide by the difference in x values, so negative 3, take away 1. Okay, rise over run. Okay, now I'm going to calculate this. So negative 7 take away 3 is negative 10. Negative 3 take away 1 is negative 4. Then if I simplify this, I get 5 over 2. So now we have the gradient of PQ, the gradient of RM. Now we have to multiply the two gradients together and hopefully it will give us negative 1. Okay, so negative 2 over 5 times positive 5 over 2. Now if I times these together, negative 2 times 5, negative 10. Positive 5 times positive 2 is positive 10. Negative 10 divided by 10 is negative 1. So, by doing that, we have shown that Rn is perpendicular to PQ.